What's good, my people? Welcome into Buckets, Action Network's NBA betting podcast. We're in the workshop presented by our guys over at FanDuel. Thursday, NBA slate. So that means Jill Gallant, Joe Delera, Sean Little. Fellas, what's going on? Dude, I'm chilling, having a great day. Decent slate. Decent slate. Jill, you found some three point props for us. We're going to break down. So that's that's always good to hear. Yeah, I mean, as I always usually say, it's 3 p.m. somewhere, and if I can't find a good three-point bet in a game, I'm probably not going to watch it. There you go. <laughs> you know the routine. We're going to give our best bets for the Thursday NBA slate. We'll then break them down and get you guys out of here. J.D., let's start with you. What are you looking at for Thursday? We are on the Oklahoma City Thunder plus six on the road with the Toronto Raptors. GG. Yeah, I got to get a bet from that game, too. I'm going to be looking at Fred Van Vliet over three and a half three-pointers at plus 130 versus the OKC Thunder. And then I'm looking at the Magic versus the Suns. I'm going to be taking a look at Gary Harris to have at least two three-pointers versus the Suns at minus 115. I am looking at the Suns team total over 121 and a half, 122. It's not yet posted as we record this Tuesday night, but that's where it should be right around that number, 121 and a half, we'll call it. I like the Suns to come out and take care of business. All right, JD, break us down. Let's start with you. All right, man, we're looking at this game. I'm like stunned by the fact that Thunder are plus six. I guess it's always in part because at this point in time, like we really don't know how many games Shea is going to necessarily be playing for them. But this seems like a spot, you know, the props are up for him already. So I feel like a lot of times that's even a telling sign that, you know, we're recording this on Wednesday night and they have props up for this game. Shea is one of those players, he's actually one of the only Thunder players with prop lines up. So I think he's going to play. Shea's Canadian. It's a spot where he gets to go home, play like on his home soil or so to speak. And I think when you really look at these two teams over the course of the whole season, they're actually like fairly comparable in terms of adjusted net rating. Oklahoma city is actually a little bit better. They're uh, ranked 12th compared to Toronto is ranked 13th, but it's about a 0.5 point differential. But when we look at this over the last two weeks, really the thunder have kind of started to figure things out as they, as hard as it's been for me as a fan to watch the thunder and try to differentiate between all of their Jay Williams, but Jalen Williams, J A L E N has been balling and he's been awesome. And they've actually over the past two weeks, uh, we're looking at the Oklahoma city thunder. They've been one of the better teams in the league. They're actually fourth in point differential over the last two weeks. They're plus 5.8 the offense is crushing they're scoring 122.8 points per 100 and toronto they just you know everybody keeps thinking that toronto's like gonna do something and like aside from kind of beating up on the nuggets which is like obviously no small task but they stink like the nuggets are, are the raptors are not very good in my opinion and over the last two weeks the only team that they've actually managed to beat is the denver nuggets because over that same point in time, they're a minus 2.3, which is the 23rd or 21st ranked metric at the time of this recording. So I think the Oklahoma City Thunder are just the better team. The Raptors have that like pedigree with Nick Nurse. And you're like, oh, like this team's going to turn it on. They trained for, traded for Pirtle, like whatever. They're just not very good. They have all these pieces that I think are more valuable probably on other teams and rather than on the actual team themselves. So I really struggle to see why Toronto is laying six, even though they're home. Like, I think that that's just way, way too many points. Probably might even sprinkle the money line for the Oklahoma City Thunder, especially if Shea does play. Um, And one spot that I think I'm going to look for, and there's no prop up yet for it, but I like Isaiah Joe's three-point prop, and I'm waiting to see where it comes out. Uh, hopefully we can get like a, maybe a one and a half, probably a two and a half though. Jola, I'm sure you can correct me on that. You're always looking at the three point lines, but the Raptors have been allowing opponents to shoot basically 40% from three since they traded for Pirtle. So it's definitely a spot that I'm looking at. Uh, hopefully we can get some of those lines later today. Double G, any thoughts on that? On on the good old Oklahoma city thunder that have been getting undervalued all year. One of the best covers in the NBA. Well, first off, I almost had to just think about if I was going to reconsider my friendship with Joe Delera more because, again, the Raptors are my team and he's already just (laughs) trashing them out of the gate. But, again, I get it. They are pretty bad this year in comparison to what we're used to in the previous years in this regime. But the one thing that obviously is still a big crux for them is that they can't really defend the three-point line. It's a 
team a fleet of swingmen, nobody can guard the perimeter. It's it's a kind of an epidemic for them where they just can't stop threes. So I'm with you, Joe. That my my issue is, is not that I don't think OKC can't win. It's just I think the spread is just a little too much. It should probably be around minus four, minus four and a half. So getting that extra two points, I think is a solid value to grab right now. Definitely, definitely. GG, talk to me about. Let's start with Gary Harris. Yeah, Gary. Uh, again, we talked about this just off air. I was like, kind of like surprised that he's still getting minutes on this team because there's just so many mouths to feed. But he is starting on this team and right around twenty to twenty five minutes a game. And we're going to look at his over one and a half three pointers made at minus one fifteen because. All he does is shoot threes. He defends the perimeter and shoots threes. Complete three and D guy. 68% of all of his shots come from behind the arc. Uh, for example, uh, for that metric, because I like to look at the splits to see of the total shots, how many of those are coming from three point. He's top 10 in the NBA in that for, for guys who take at least four three point shot attempts per game. So that's obviously very encouraging. Um, he's averaged just over two made threes per game in every month this year. So January, February, and March, you go look at the splits. He's averaging just over two per game leads the team in three point shooting percentage at 43.1%. He's second on the team in attempts per game. That is the one a little annoying thing about the Magic, though. They don't really take a ton of threes. They rank 27th in uh, three-point attempts per game. But when you got Markel Fultz starting up at point guard, he rarely shoots, so he's going to be dishing up. Somebody's got to shoot it from three. It's definitely going to be Gary Harris, especially going against the Suns defense that obviously we have high hopes. We obviously think that they're going to go far if Kevin Durant comes back and is who he's supposed to be. But since the All-Star break... They have not been very good at defending the perimeter, especially against opposing guards. They're 25th in three-point makes allowed to opposing guards. And if you got Markel Fultz on one side not shooting, that naturally leads you to think that Gary Harris is going to be the one who has to take those shots. Now, you could talk me into a sprinkle on Markel Fultz at three-point uh, for at least one three-pointer at plus 175. But I'll just warn uh, warn anybody who's listening right now, like I've been down that road. It's just pain. Like it's it, it just the well, you, you got a guy who's playing 35 to 40 minutes and just will not shoot. And his form is much better than what we've seen in the first few years. But I digress. We're going with Gary Harris over one and a half three pointers at minus 115. All right, let's keep it. Let's keep it rolling with you, G Dog. Give me uh play number two. A little plus well, one. We'll, well, we'll go right back to the Thunder game versus the Raptors. And Again, I'm not going to shade the Thunder too much because, Joe, you were right. Like It was a solid bet to kind of look at them to have the best record uh, after the All-Star break. Seven and seven right now, things have kind of – you just don't really know what you're getting from that team game to game uh, as far as who's going to play. But yeah. what we do know is that Fred Van Vliet shoots a ton of three-pointers. Like He is top 10 in the NBA in three-point attempts and three-point makes, especially since the All-Star break. A ton of volume from that guy. Uh, in that same span since the All-Star break, OKC is actually allowing the most three-pointers to opposing guards at 9.7 and the most attempts at 27.6. That latter stat is most important because Fred Van Bleed, as much as we like him and uh, just not shooting, he's not Steph, he's not Dame, he's not going to shoot over 40% from three. It's probably going to be 34 to 35%. Uh, so for me, I'm looking at it like if he's going to play, he's going to put up a ton of shots. He's probably going to put up 10 to 13 three-pointers in this game. And again, another player where the majority of his three-point shots or majority of his shots come from three-point range, right around 57% of all of his shots come from that. So you know that he's not really driving into the bucket. His free throws are down. So that's really where the majority of his offense comes from. And then a lot of people, what they'll do as well with Fred, and really just betting three-point props in general, you'll go look at recent matchups. So they played the Thunder earlier this year. He went three for seven from three points. So you're like, well, Jill, you didn't have a ton of attempts. He didn't really, he didn't hit the over on this. Well, the Raps got blown out in that game. They actually lost by 20, which helps the OKC plus six bet. But he only played 29 minutes. Just to put that in perspective, he's only played less than 30 minutes three times this season. Like, he is one of the minute-leading players in the NBA. He yeah. plays a lot. So when he plays a lot, he shoots a lot. So we're not asking him to go, you know, 10 for 13 from three. Just a nice, tidy little four from 13, maybe. And uh, as well, the Jakob Portal uh, trade, you've seen his three-point attempts actually pick up since then, where Gary Harris is not playing as much anymore in this rotation. And he's playing like 38 to 42 minutes and taking like 10 threes a game. So Fred Van Bleed, especially against this Thunder defense that where it's kind of a hit or miss of what you're going to get from them each game, I think it's a solid play here at over three and a half three-pointers at plus 130. Fred's coming off a monster game as well in the last outing against Denver. He went absolutely crazy. He know, We know that he could fill it up 
at any moment. I like it, D-Dog. All right. I'm going right. Since we're going back to games, let's go back to the Suns Magic game. I'm going to go Suns team total over. It's not posted yet as we record this Wednesday night. I am. It's, it should be around 121 and a half, 122. I like it either way. Whatever it comes out at, around that number, I like it. So I'm going to take Suns team total. We'll call it 121 and a half right now. This is a get right, great spot for the Suns, especially offensively. They've lost three straight, but Booker continues to cook with Kevin Durant out with him there. He's been putting up big numbers in March, averaging 34.6 points a game, only going under that 30-point mark one time. Now, Sean, why aren't you just looking at Booker's point prop? It's at 30 and a half right now. I wouldn't be I wouldn't be mad if, if you looked at that, but I think it's going to be very, very tight. It's going to be 31, 32 points scored by Book. So that's why I'm looking at the overall team performance offensively for the Suns. Last five games, four of those without KD. Number five in offensive rating, top 10 in pace. And then let's talk about the Magic, who are absolutely struggling as of late. 26th in net rating last five games. That's minus five. 27th in defensive rating, giving up 121 points per 100. They just gave up 132 points to the Spurs in their last time out. And you would think, okay, maybe they were out there, had a really bad game, turned the ball over a ton. They only get, they only had nine turnovers. Spurs had 15, and they still ran those guys out of the gym. They're trending down at the moment. I I, I love that they're coming off of a I, – I love that the Suns are coming off three straight losses without KD. Now kind of that narrative is sparking up, well – Looks like you guys can't win without KD all of a sudden. I think this is just a great spot for those guys to bounce back. Both teams top 10 in pace the last five games as well. Magic are, are seventh. The Suns are 10. Also, Magic 5-0 and to the over in their last five games. Five straight games where they've gone over. Suns 7-3 and to the over in their last 10. I really like the spot. The three losses the Suns are coming off of. Bucks, Warriors, and that's the Warriors in San Francisco. So that, that, that game actually counts. Yeah, totally different. And, <laughs> totally different <laughs> squad. And then they had the Kings. Those are tough teams. The The Suns get back to business at home. I expect 30-plus from Book. I expect a double-digit win, and I think they score 125-plus. So if this number comes out 121.5, 122, 122.5, I like the Suns team total and that over. This is a great – Great get-right spot. Playing the Magic, who are trending down. They've lost three straight. Book is going to get home, and they're going to take care of business in a major way, I believe. Yeah. Any, any thoughts? Dude, I like it a lot. I mean, I think that one of the things, too, without Kevin Durant, it's, it's actually been interesting because the Suns' defense has not been as good either. So, like, I know that the Magic have struggled, but I could see this being, like, a shootout. Yeah, it could and, be a game over as well. I, I just yeah. – I just, I just, the only reason I didn't look at Booker – I think that's going to be tight on the points prop. And then the only reason I didn't look at the game over is because I could see the magic not showing. They they, they just yeah. they didn't show up with, against the Spurs the other night. I, yep. I, I'm i confident Phoenix shows up in this spot. That's why I'm taking the team total. A hundred percent. Yeah. Like, I think that you're like, you're going to be in for like a really nice, like paced game. You're going to be looking in for turnovers. Like that's, I think it's perfect. I think it's a great spot, especially, you know, like the magic, they, or, or the Suns rather. The defense hasn't been as good without KD. Obviously, they're playing better teams, and then now you're just going to get a spot where you get to kind of go run and gun. Like I think they're going to out, they're going to be out coached. Uh, the Magic are going to be out coached here. They're going to be out manned. Like this is going to be. I think this could be a bloodbath. One thing I want to bring up on another game. I, I I'm shocked that are, are we just off the Nuggets? N- nothing for the Nuggets Pistons. They've Dude. lost now four in a row. First time this year. The numbers twelve. The total's 228. I felt like we were going to get some some action from either one of you guys. I knew I wasn't looking at it, but I thought I thought something would come from, from one of you guys in that matchup. G-Dog, any thoughts on the first time Nuggets losing four in a row? Now they play a team in the Pistons who are dreadful. Looks like the, the tank is fully, fully out on them. They're trying to lose the rest of their games this year. Why isn't this the exact same thing that the Warrior or that the the Wizards just did to these guys in a complete blowout? Well, I think part of it is just, I think part of it is the injury risk and just where, with the Nuggets of Porter, Jokic, and Murray, none of those guys, like none, nobody past Jokic is going to be considered top five at their position, right? So a lot of the time with this team, you know, they're struggling. They're like every team in the NBA, if unless you're like the bottom five teams 
you're going to get a tough game usually, especially with the Nuggets where, you know, they have a target on their back, having the best record in the NBA from a betting perspective. I think there's a lot of people as well uh, who have taken my approach, who kind of maybe was leaning to Jokic for MVP at the start of the year, grabbed it, you know, when it was really inflated odds, like up to plus 2000 when they struggled at the first of the year, and then you grab it. And now we're sitting at where, just because of this last three or four games, you're watching the MVP market just completely shift towards Embiid, where I just think that the general consensus of betters is that people are just like, you know what? I'm not sure if Jokic is as good as we think he is. And, and I, again, I don't agree with that necessarily, but I just think that's kind of where the betters mentality is. Is like, until I see them kind of get it right and go back on maybe a four or five, maybe even seven game win streak, I'm going to wait. I'm going to take my foot off the gas on them and maybe just bet them more when we get to the playoffs. JD, another yeah. interesting spot. Oh, yeah, go ahead. go ahead and comment. I was going to say, I mean, I think one of the things that we're forgetting about here is the teams that they played have been kind of like awkward to play almost. Like the Spurs shot like 40% from three when the Spurs won't beat them. Um, Brooklyn, you just don't really know how to handicap a game against them. Like they have no game plan. They just like get <laughs> a bunch. They just, they just have like a bunch of dudes that just – all play well and it's like if nobody's if somebody's out like having a rough game you can literally just replace like every part so it's i think it's like a little bit of a tough spot and then like historically the raptors have given the nuggets issues just because of their like all their length athleticism i think we're hitting like a little spot like patch in the road and it's funny because like we're talking about it like the nuggets aren't the number one seed in the west with like a handy lead like they lost four in a row and nobody's even worried about them not being the one seed, you know, like John Morant's still going to be missing a couple more games with, the, with that suspension. As good as the Kings are, they're not passing Denver. Like Denver's not going to let that happen uh, at this point. And I think that there's just like a little bit of a spot in the road here. I'm, I was looking at this game. I'm not a hundred percent sure I'm going to play this game. Uh, I might look for like a first half or something like that, where I can, I don't have to worry about like a double digit spread, but I, I think it's tough to get away from Denver, especially I think Jill, like I think you hit the nail on the head, right? Because you don't have a team that has guys that are like as good as Jokic. Like he is the clear one a playing in this in for this team. And over the last four games, you're not seeing these guys like play as many minutes and you're starting to see some weird rotations out of Michael Malone. So you're seeing a little bit more Reggie Jackson. You're seeing a little bit more Jeff Green. You're seeing more Christian Braun, Tomas Bryant. Like you're trying to see them like what works for them. And I think right now they know who their main guys are. They know what the top six guys in the rotation are. They're trying to figure out who is seven and eight for the playoff run. And they're willing to give up some of these games. So that's a little bit of my concern on betting on the Nuggets from like a spread perspective. I'll just well, mention too, um, the Nuggets this year for anybody looking for season long trends, just as a double digit favorite this year, they're seven, four and one. Uh, so it's not like, you know, the sky is falling for them. So you could consider them in this spot, especially playing against a future Detroit Pistons team. Totally, I just would yeah. exercise caution that like, don't let the eye test fool you. Like what we're seeing over the last four games, I think what it is is just the Denver Nuggets are hitting that wall or that proverbial wall that every team kind of hits throughout the year. It just happens to be right in kind of the clutch time of when the season is wrapping up and when most eyes are on the NBA. 100%. Yeah, make sure you keep your eyes on the injury report as well. See who's playing for Detroit. But I'll say this. When I saw the Wizards favored by 13 and a half, I was like, yeah, I wouldn't give up 13. They can't. They're not supposed to be giving up 13 and a half to anybody. And they absolutely <laughs> dismantled the Pistons and covered that number. Yeah. Last, last comment before we get out of here. Interesting game. Sacramento going to Brooklyn. Brooklyn has, has played nine of their last 11 on the road. This is their first home game uh, in, in, in quite a while. So that's always an interesting spot. The Kings will be on a back-to-back -back as well. Um, that number right now is Nets minus three. Keep an eye on that. I think that's a really interesting spot. So that's going to do it for Buckets, the Thursday edition for Joe Gallant, for J.D. Joe Delaire. I am your host, Sean Little. To recap, I am on Suns team total over 121.5, over 122. Jill is on Gary Harris over one and a half threes minus 115. Fred Van Vliet over three and a half threes at plus 130. And JD is on the Thunder plus six. That's going to do it. Until next time, get buckets, baby.